my children are a part of not the new covenant. So I don't view them as new covenant members until regeneration. And then we apply the new covenant sign, new birth, followed by the new covenant sign, baptism, and, and the corresponding renewing oath sign of the Lord's Supper. Um, until that happens, I'm, I'm not saying um, that you are objectively a part of the new covenant, but I'm also not every day, you know, casting doubt saying you're not, because again, C point A, regeneration does mm-hmm. happen in a moment, but my ability to perceive it is uh, fallible and, and it could could happen very early. Um, but regardless, even if regeneration hasn't happened, then in the objective theological sense, my unregenerate child is an unbeliever, and therefore I have there's no biblical category of an unbeliever that loves Jesus. Uh, so if they are an unbeliever, Romans 3 does describe them in the inward ultimate sense. They they actually do hate God. Um, however, in terms of my treatment, how do I respond to this person, this little person that I love, that I'm their father? Well, I'm going to um, to treat them um, in as as belonging not to the new covenant, but belonging to our familial covenant, and our family is a Christian family. I'm going to treat them, they're going to be uh, treated as pre-Christian. Uh, we're not going to view it as a matter of if. I hope God saves my kids. I hope my kids are elect. No, we're going to treat it as a matter of when, because God doesn't divorce the ends of grace from the means of grace. He gave them to me. If God didn't intend to save my kids, he could have given them to my Muslim neighbor, mm-hmm. my pagan neighbor. Uh, but he gave them to me, and and everything in me believes, I mean, from, from Scripture and also just from history and from statistics, uh, where... Uh, how do most people come to faith? They're born in a Christian household. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how come, right, if it's just unconditional, and it is unconditional election, but if unconditional election is arbitrary election, and parenting and households have uh, uh, no, no influence in the matter whatsoever, well then, gee golly, what a coincidence that in... Uh, in countries that are predominantly Christian, a lot of the kids end up becoming Christian. And in <laughs> countries that are predominantly Muslim, most of them end up becoming Muslim. You know, like... I mean, wake up, you know, like, of course, smell the coffee. Of of course, yeah. parenting matters. Of course. It, and so, Joel, then are you saying that um, that salvation is the product of good parenting? And if I parent Christian enough, if I parent hard enough, I can actually produce salvation? No. What I'm <laughs> saying is that salvation is unconditional. God chooses. But that end, which is salvation, God's election, his choice of a person to inherit eternal life, God also chooses the means by which it comes about. And the chief means by which it comes about is, well, the means is the gospel, and the chief avenue for the gospel being uh, frequently uh, immersing that person again and again and again is Christian homes. And so every Christian parent should believe uh, every single kid that God gave me, he gave them to me because they are elect. They may not be regenerate yet, but they are elect. And so it's simply a matter not of if God saves them, but when he saves them. And the chief means that God uses is the gospel. The gospel is the only means, the power of God for salvation. But the chief avenue for which that gospel uh, preaching comes about is parenting. And, And that doesn't mean I am earning uh, mm-hmm. the salvation of my kids, or I am somehow working the God of the universe into my debt to where he owes me the salvation of my kids. But what it does mean is every single day I do family worship, when I was tired and felt like doing something else, um, I'm going to chalk that up not to God owes me. I'm going to chalk it up instead of uh, God gave me the same grace that I believe God will dispense in the salvation of my kids. Um, that same grace was present today by giving me the strength to do worship, uh, family worship as the means of producing that salvation. Like God, I did family worship today, therefore God owes me the salvation of my kids. No, no, I did uh, family worship today because God um, God was gracious. And, and, um, and God was gracious in empowering me to do family worship because he also intends to be gracious in using that family worship and that gospel over the years to produce the salvation of my child, who is maybe not yet regenerate, but is in fact elect. And you can have that view with confidence, not tossing and turning as a parent, you know, father and mother in bed every night thinking, oh, I hope my kids don't go to hell. You can have that, that rest assured confidence in God, and you can do it in a way that is not arrogant, it's not presumptuous, it's not God owes me, but it's just simply saying, these are his promises, this is how God has worked historically, this is how he worked in Scripture, this is how he, he has statistically worked worked in, in, in every single generation for the last 2,000 years of, of church history. Um, everything is leaning, massively skewed. It's The deck is stacked, and it's all stacked in my favor, 
in the favor of God saving my kids. So mm. I'm I'm going to write, and I can hold. My point is, I can hold to all of that as a Baptist. 